Hey everyone, I'm Jacob. I'm a machine learning engineer and developer evangelist in Voxel 51. And today I'm going to be telling you about our image quality issues plugin. So right now we're in the middle of a 10 weeks of plugin series where every week we bring you a new plugin, which extends the uh, all functionality within the 51 ecosystem and allows you to customize it more to your specific workflows. This plugin was actually a week zero plugin. So I made this right before the 10 weeks of plugins began. It has gotten some updates since then, but it's just so cool and so useful that it's worth talking about, even though it's not specifically part of this 10 weeks of plugin series. Um, so this is the GitHub repo right here. Um, there's a little GIF over here that shows what it looks like. And these are all of the issue types that you can find uh, with this 51 plugin. It's not going to help you to find every single type of issue with your image data sets, but it will certainly help you to find a lot of the common types. So if things like images with weird aspect ratios or blurry images or images that are too bright or dark, uh, high contrast, uh, entropy. So when it, when it, when I say entropy here, I mean images that have low information content. Uh, so entropy is a measure of the amount of information that there is in the images to some extent. Uh, I come from physics. So uh, my understanding of entropy is a little bit different than uh, people from uh, computer science or machine learning uh, bent, but uh, you can, if you have images that have very low entropy, it might be that they're just completely black, or completely white, or a few pixels that are off, but, uh, you know, don't really have that much information to, to give to the entire data set. And uh, you know, as a result, don't have too much uh, in the way of training the model at the end of the day. Uh, you can find images that have uh, over or under exposure, um, uneven illumination, uh, salt and pepper noise, and even images with low and high saturation. Uh, so you can do all these things within one plugin. It's just so incredibly powerful. And it's not like this is just a you know, one shot and you're done type of thing. Um, you can actually customize and you know, define how much uh, kind of thresholding uh, for each of these properties where you want to, to define something as an issue versus uh, acceptable. You can def decide which of these you actually want to include as issues versus which ones are okay, which ones are part of your data uh, diversity. So you can install this plugin with 51 plugins download and then passing the name of this GitHub repo, which is Jacob Marks, that's me, slash image quality issues. You can see that there's 10 operators here. This is the most operators that I put in a plugin yet. So 10 operators, but you know, don't be afraid. They're all really, really simple to use. So once you have installed the plugin, you can hop on over to the app and here I'm looking at the quick start data set. So this is a subset of the Coco data set. Uh, and if we click on the backtick slash tilde button on the keyboard to pull up our list of operators, we can see some of them. Here we've got this common issues one at the top because I just used it. But in general, if we wanted to search for them, we could just search common issues and we'll see all of these plugins over here. Uh, so if we click on this one right here. We can see this compute aspect ratio and we could decide to delegate that or not. Now a delegation is a new feature. So this plugin has been updated to allow for delegation. And what that means is you can decide whether or not you want to have this done in real time or queued as a job to be completed at a later time as you specified. Here, we're not going to delegate it, but we're going to compute our aspect ratio. And this is going to compute it for all of the images in the data set right now. And we're refreshing and we can see uh, we have this aspect ratio over here and notice that the upper bound is one because we're actually just looking at the uh, the maximum of the the width or the minimum of the width over the height versus the height over the width and the metadata the, the height and the width of these images are set uh, are those are computed if they need to be computed in order to make the aspect ratio computable so we can filter by these as we are used to you can look at things with pretty even aspect ratios. These are pretty square. You can look at things that have the least even aspect ratios right here. Maybe those are in domain, maybe they're out of domain. Great. Okay. Let's try a different one, but this time let's say we only wanted to compute whatever the property is for a few of our images. Well, let's just select a few right here, common issues, and let's compute the blurriness for those. So here we see we're actually given a choice whether we want to compute for the entire data set for the current view 
or for the selected samples. And in this case, we're given this choice because we actually have selected samples, so there's a choice to make. Uh, and here, we'll just do it for the selected samples. And because there's only four samples, it's super quick right here. Now we can look, look at this blurriness, and we can see, let's go to the, the blurriest of them over here. So or the, the least blurry, so these are pretty unblurry. Now let's look at the blurriest, which is this one. And that's pretty blurry, pretty blurry. Of course, we can also compute this across the entire data set. So let's just do compute blurriness and let's do entire data set. Just so we can see what it looks like on a larger scale. Now that's, let's look at the most blurry images in the entire data set, this one. And there's like all these grainy pixels going on. And you know, whether it's exactly blurry or, or not, let's, let's you know, pull a little bit further over here. Okay, some of these are kind of blurry. Some of them are maybe not so blurry. Look at these. We can compute other properties. So let's look at our common issues. Uh, we can do things like look at the entropy. So let's look at entropy for the entire data set. We've computed entropy and let's clear our selection just so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's look at entropy. Let's look at the highest entropy and the lowest entropy over here. This image is you know, almost entirely white because it is, it's it's snow it looks like, because uh, there's somebody who has skis um, and there are these people over here. So this is a image that has a ton of you know, snow everywhere and there's not much else going on. Maybe we want to call this an issue, maybe we don't. Now let's reset this and now Okay, now we've computed some properties. We haven't computed all the properties. We've just computed a few of the properties. Um, but now what do we want to do with that? Let's go back to our common issues search within the operator list. And let's go down to this find issues at the bottom. So this is where the magic happens. So with this, we can look for dark images, bright images, weird aspect ratios, all these things. And we can set the thresholds for all of these as we want. So in our, in our case, let's say we just want to look for images with weird aspect ratios uh, that are bright and dark, and let's turn everything else off. We don't care about these properties for now. So let's do that. Okay. And we can set these thresholds. Let's do 0.15 for this one, and let's do 0.53. Um, I'm just making these up right now, but depending on your application, you will have a better or uh, maybe you need to refine your sense of what these thresholds should be. Maybe you need to adaptively work with them. And uh, you can also filter by these in the app once you've computed these things, but let's just do this. Let's compute. And we didn't actually have the darkness, the brightness computed for our images, which is necessary for finding the bright and dark images. So what it's done is it, it's actually gone and computed the brightness and darkness for us in order to find those issues. Um, so here we have our brightness field over here, and now we can look for the darkest images or the, the brightest images right here. And this, this same property is used for uh, finding the bright images and the dark images. And we've got these Booleans right here, it's these true falses, uh, which are bright and dark. And those were computed uh, using that brightness field. And we've only got one dark image according to this particular, uh, let's reset, uh, let's reset this. Uh, so it looks like none of our images were actually uh, seen as dark. Uh, so maybe our darkness threshold was a little bit off. And maybe we need to set our darkness threshold to uh, 0.2 because we actually used a darkness threshold of 0.15 and there are no images that had a darkness below 0.15. So let's change that right here. And let's do 0.21. Now let's look at our darkness. So now we've got these four images, which are pretty dark over here. We can look at our bright images. So look at the bright and true. So maybe, I mean, these are all pretty bright images. Um, there's a lot of 
sea and sky here. Maybe we want to set our brightness special differently. We can do that you know, if we'd like to. Um, but I would also like to point out that all of this is captured now in this tags as well. So the tags for all of the issues for each of the samples is uh, is, is noted along the way. It's uh, uh, jotted down if necessary. And so everything that's an issue here is tagged as an issue. And then they're also tagged with whatever sub issue they have. So we could, for instance, look at things with weird aspect ratios. And now let's just show things with weird aspect ratios here. And as I mentioned, we can also choose to delegate these tasks to be, be done at our, a later date. And let's go to our Coco validation split. Here we're looking at 5,000 samples from the Coco validation split. And because we've got 5,000 samples here instead of 200, it might take a little bit longer. Hopefully still not too long, but maybe a little bit longer to actually compute these things. So to, to do this, let's actually go and so we want to compute the blurriness, but we want to delegate it. So here we get this message, you've chosen delegate execution. Uh, you must have a delegated service running in order for this task to be processed. Let's do that. Let's schedule it. And we've scheduled the operation. And now let's go over to our Python right here, or let's go over to our, our, uh, our terminal, uh, not a Python session. And we can look at 51 delegated list. So we delegated this for later execution. So now we're going to see this is queued. So this is on our Cocoa validation split right here. We queued it at this time. Uh, this is the operation. As they, we queued the, operate, we, the execution of this particular operator on the data set. Uh, and it, the state right now is queued. Now, if we want to launch this, we can do that with 51 delegated launch. And that's going to launch it. It's going to run the operation. And, you know, it might take a second, but this, this is what the, the launching does so that it doesn't actually have to happen in real time while you're in the app. And you can continue to explore and go about your other workflows as you so choose. Uh, so I hope that this is useful for you. Again, it's not a, uh, you know, a full stop solution for all of your image quality issues, but it's a really good start. It helps you define a lot of the common issues that plague uh, computer vision data sets that are made up of images. Uh, and the fact that you can threshold based on all these properties and choose which ones are important to you as you go and interactively work with them is what's really crucial here. So I hope that it's useful and uh, stay tuned for our upcoming plugins and tons of content around them. Thanks so much.